Hi guys, it's Roy Fugler here again at the Vaxi Training Centre in Warrington with another Vaxi Training Tuesday top tip. We've been called out to this EQ Blue Advance. The customer's been complaining that they're topping the pressure up on a regular basis and that water's coming out the PRV, typically when the heating's on or when they're running a bath. My initial diagnosis would be the expansion vessel has lost its charge, so what we'll do is investigate that. So the first thing I'd need to do, I've checked on the boiler and it's flashing up 0.7 and the temperature. And there's a little symbol there which is indicating low system pressure. Because the water's coming out of the PRV, that's leading me to think that the expansion vessel's either failed or lost its charge because it's not taking up that expansion of water. Water normally expands 4% its volume when it's heated up. That's the reason we have an expansion vessel in there. The reason we have the PRV is increase that pressure exceeds 3 bar, it will discharge before doing any damage to the internals on the boiler. So the first thing I'm going to do is drain the boiler down because when I'm repressurizing it, I don't want any pressure in the boiler and I would be leaving the drain point open. So, as you can see, I've turned off both the flow and the return isolation valve attach the hose onto the drain point which is inside the boiler. Prior to doing that, I've isolated the fuse spur, removed the fuse and carried out my basic electric safety checks. I've then drained the water into an appropriate vessel until the pressure gauge has gone down to zero. As you can see, the gauge now is down at zero. I've left the drain point fully open so that when I repressurise the expansion vessel it won't trap any water inside the boiler which could give me a false reading on the air side of the expansion vessel. So I'm going to remove the cap from the Schrader valve on the top of the boiler, attach a pressure gauge and then check what the pressure is. So as you can see, the pressure's down at zero. So I'm now going to repressurize the expansion vessel up to just over one bar. Now I've got the pressure to just over one bar, unattach the hose from the Schrader valve and check the Schrader valve. So I'm going to disconnect the Schrader, the hose and check the Schrader valve with the LDF. As we can see, the Schrader valve is actually passing quite badly. That would indicate we've got two options. So, option one would be to fit a Schrader valve extension that neatly fits onto the existing Schrader valve. We tighten it down. Again, check for leaks. And there we can see we've now got a new Schrader valve which we can use and we can test that to make sure that's not leaking. We then pop the cap on the end of it and that's one repair. I typically use these Schrader valve extensions for things like Baxi Duotex, Baxi Platinums, Potterton Pro Maxes where the Schrader valve isn't external to the boiler, where it's internal, it's a little bit more awkward and it's easier to get on. What I'd normally do on an external ex a Schrader valve is I would normally use a Schrader valve core. So that's a Schrader valve core. That replaces the Schrader internally and it saves replacing a complete expansion vessel. You need a tool to replace that. So there are two types of tool available. One is that which you'll commonly see if you ever go to places like Quick Fit um, Associated Tire Service, you'll see the tire fitters using these to remove the old Schrader valves out of tires when they're doing repairs. And then there's another version, which is that one, which is a multi-tool. It can clean the threads, it can clear the threads, it can also clear the threads on the top. So what I'll do, I'll show you how to replace the Schrader valve core. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of all the air out of the expansion vessel and remove this damaged core. So 
So as you can hear, the air's coming out at quite a rate. Now we can remove that old core, which is damaged. Pop the new core in. Tighten it in. And then repressurize the expansion vessel as we did earlier. So we've now repressurized the expansion vessel up to just over one bar. So we can now remove the hose and check that this shred of valve is not leaking. As we can see, it's not leaking. So we can clean the top of the boiler, make sure there's no leak detection spray left on there. Refit the dust cap and then repressurize and test the boiler. So, as you can see, we've got the boiler pressure just over one bar. An important thing to do, if the boiler has a deaeration function, we've drained water out of it. We want to get rid of any air that's trapped in the heat exchanger, which could possibly cause us damage. This particular boiler, the Eco Blue Advance, all we do to put it into deaeration function is hold the IP button and the radiator minus button in together. If we hold them in for six seconds, it will go into deaeration mode, and what we'll see is it will say 312. So it's now in deaeration mode. Once all the air's gone, and we can hear it go nice and quiet, and it stopped burgling and gurgling, we can take it out of that mode. If we left it in there, it'd stay in that mode for seven minutes, and then come out of its own accord. So the last thing to do before we hand it back to the customer is put it in heating, put it in hot water, check that out, make sure it's getting up to temperature and the customer's happy. Then we know we've completed another job and everybody's happy. So guys, I hope you like that uh, latest Training Tuesday tip. So from me, Roy Fugler, until next time, take care, stay safe and I'll see you soon.